Hello everyone, this is Carissa with Summerlin Studios, and today we're going to talk about something that's especially important for photographers when dealing with their website, and that is how to size your images for the web. Now there's sort of a careful balance that we always need to maintain, and especially as photographers, we always wanna make sure that our images look as good on your website as they do in any other format so that people are seeing the best reflection of your work. But on the other side, we're trying to make sure that our site still loads in a reasonable amount of time, um, that it's fast enough and that can impact overall your SEO, but also directly whether someone is going to stick around and wait for your page to load. So today we're going to talk about um, what to think about when resizing your images and go over how to do that in a couple different pieces of software. Um, this is something I go over with my clients all the time and I'm hoping seeing it start to finish in a video will be the easiest way to sort of understand what you need to be thinking about. So the first thing to consider, I've got my folder open here with a couple of my images and depending on the exact camera you're using and whether these were cropped before they were exported and things like that will affect your original file size. Uh, but you can see this one, for example, as I exported it is seven megabytes. Now that's the full res file, the way I originally exported it from Lightroom. I didn't do any resizing except maybe a bit of cropping. Uh, if you have a higher megapixel, now that's the original file size, the way I exported it, maybe with a little bit of cropping, depending on other things, like if you've added grain to your photo and how much detail can affect the file size too. But obviously seven megabytes is too big for me to put on my website and expect the page to load if I have a whole bunch of um, photos that size on the page. So the goal that we're looking for, for our final image when we upload it is twofold really. We're looking for the pixel dimensions of the photo and for that, Generally, we want to do about 2,000 pixels on the long side, but we'll, we'll talk about that. And two is the biggest file size you want, like absolute max really, is 300 kilobytes. I'm going to aim more for like 150 to 200 even. Um, generally, I can get to that point where I'm still perfectly happy with how my image looks. Um, and then I'll go through the actual process of uploading it, in this case to WordPress, and then a plugin that can help you even do a little bit of last minute optimization just to get a little bit more out of it at, at the end. So first we're going to do a resize in a Lightroom export. So if you already have all your images in Lightroom, it's already a tool you use, this can be kind of your quickest way to go about this. Um, so I'm going to go, this is my full original image, and I'm going to go to File Export just like I normally would when I was saving the photo except we're going to come down here and look at the image sizing. So for this, um, since I don't know exactly how I'm going to use this on my site for right now, I'm going to keep my long edge at 2000 pixels. Now, if you are uploading an image that you know is going in a smaller spot on your site, an image that's not going to be full size, or if you have a really narrow blog um, and you don't ever anticipate in going to a wider blog, you can go smaller than 2000 pixels. For me, generally, if I'm inserting this on a blog, it's going to be full size. My blog is usually full width or close to it. So I'd rather go with 2000 pixels so that I can use this easily on a blog. If I was going to put this, say, on my homepage in a spot where I know it's, you know, one small picture with some text, I would go down to maybe 1000 pixels. Um, also for vertical images, it's easy to do 2000 on the long side because normally you're doing this in bulk. If you know you're uploading a vertical image on its own, it's 2000 pixels is really going to be overboard for what you really ever need on a, on a monitor for that type of image. And you can usually go more like 1000 pixels for that. Because I'm doing this in bulk and because I'm not that picky about the file size in the end, it's easier for me just to say 2000 pixels on the long side for something that I'm doing bulk for a blog or a gallery, something like that. So I'm gonna leave that at 2000 pixels. And then what we really care about is up here. So you actually do have the option to specifically tell it what your file size should be and it's going to adjust your quality to get to that point. I prefer, at least start when you're starting the process, to go in with the quality slider myself and get it to exactly the point that I want. Now, once you've done this enough, assuming you're using your same camera, for the most part, once you go through and play with all this and get a result that you're happy with, you can usually leave it there. And you would have to reevaluate if maybe you're, you have a little cropping or you get a new camera or something like that. Otherwise, once you find your sweet spot, it's, it's generally going to be the same. Um, 
So what I'm usually going to do for quality in here is going to go down to somewhere around 65. And you can play with it for your specific camera. As I said, some of this is up front, just a little bit of trial and error. Um, so I'm going to export it. Quality is at 65, my long edge is at 2000. Um, you also might want to do some sharpening. So I, when I initially exported this, I did not sharpen it, do sharpening for screen because I want images I can use to print too. Um, so I want a little more control over the sharpening. So for web, if you export this and you look at it and it's not quite as sharp once it's resized, you do, it is possible you might have to come back in here and add some sharpening. So again, part of that is just sort of figuring out your process. That will depend on, you know, what sharpening you're already doing before you export and a lot of different things. So it's not really universal but that is an option that you might want to look at. So I'm going to click export. And I'll come in here. Um, this one isn't renamed. So I'm at 219 kilobytes. That's not bad. Um, if I zoom in from right here, and that's really even bigger than it's ever going to be in my blog. I'm perfectly happy with that quality wise. And I could probably even go a little bit lower. Um, things you want to start looking for when you're thinking about the quality, especially in a studio photo like this, is sometimes you'll start to see banding in here, um, some artifacting. So if I were to go in, let's try exporting this at, say it went down to like 40%. And I don't know if this really shows in the video, but all in here, I see banding. There's banding all around here, all around here. That's not there on the full resolution photo. That was not there when I had it at 65%, but it's definitely there and it's definitely obvious when I go down to 40. So for me at that point, I'm not happy with that. And I would start going back up the quality slider until I did find one that I was happy with. So I might even go in and try, you know, 60, see if I could get it a little smaller and still be happy. Yeah, and I don't see any, I don't see banding here. Maybe a tiny bit starting on the edges. So I think for this one, 65 might be my sweet spot. I'm happy enough with that file size that I'm not too worried about it. Um, so we'll go back to 65. Yeah, and that's definitely something I'm happy with at that size. So for me, that tells me my sweet spot if I'm exporting right from Lightroom is about 65. Now, if I compare this to the original, I don't really see a lack of sharpness here. And I think that looks sharp enough for me. Um, but as I said, you know, I do some sharpening before I export, so that's okay for me. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work for you. You might need to add a little sharpening. So I'm going to flip over to Photoshop and we'll go through basically the same process in Photoshop. So I'm going to flip over to Photoshop and we'll go through the same process there. So if you prefer to use Photoshop, this is the process that you would go through. Um, and I believe there are ways to automate this too. You can create an action or buy an action that does some of the resizing for you. Um, and probably even batch export. This isn't usually the tool I use, but I will show you how you can actually get to where you need to be. So this is again my full res image. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to image and image size, because again, we have to get this down to 2000 pixels. So I'm gonna put 2000 pixels. It's locked the aspect ratio, so it's gonna resize it for me. So now we've done the resize, which is the first step. And then the second step again is when we're going to do save. So I'm going to do a file save as, and let's add PS on this so we know it's Photoshop. So I'm saving it as a JPEG. And then we're back here again with our quality slider. So around here, I'm going to try for six, which I believe is about the equivalent of the 60% in Lightroom. Um, so we'll start with a six and see where that gets us. And that looks pretty good to me. I don't see the banding like I saw on the other one. And I think it looks nice and sharp. And I can 
flip back to the, I flip back and forth to the Lightroom one. Looks even a little bit sharper to me than Lightroom one. So it might be doing more sharpen on export than Lightroom is doing. Um, but for me, I'm happy with that for a blog image. That's perfectly fine for me. So if you try that and you're not quite happy, then you can go step up your quality slider a little bit. This is a smaller file size. Um, this gets me down to 172 kilobytes. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then the last tool I'm going to show you is blog stomp and this is one of the tools that people tend to either love or hate. It can be a little bit more of a process to find your sweet spot in here. I've found because of the way they do the settings, but it also, if you can find a sweet spot you're happy with, it's way faster than the other tools for me. Because if I've already exported all the images from a session that I know I want to share, or I'm making a new blog post and I'm pulling photos from a bunch of different sessions, I can stick them in a folder. I can put them all in here. And then once you find your settings you're happy with, you can batch process it and it will just go through every photo for you. And you can also save specific profiles. So if I go to settings here, you have these different settings, um, different styles. So you can pick specific styles and then it'll um, save it just as that specific profile. So for me, this is my website profile. So I know if I'm exporting for my website, I use this one. Um, and these are the settings I want to use for that. So I have my long edge again set to 2000. And then my JPEG quality here, I have at 75. I do find for me, I have to have it higher than I do in the other software to get quality I'm happy with, but it also does give you a smaller file size. So I think that's just the way that they're doing it. Um, 75 is usually what has worked for me. So I'm going to leave that for now. So the other thing we want to look at in here is under output is configure sharpening. So this is similar to what we talked about in Lightroom where we want to make sure that it's sharpened enough when it exports, but not over sharpened. So if you click your preview up here, um, you can see your sharpening settings previewed here. And I'm not sure how well that comes through on the video, but if you play around with this, you can see, especially on his eyes here, I can definitely tell a difference. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening, but not too much. I don't want it to look too over sharpened when I export it. So I'm going to click save. And then if I came over here, if I wanted to do all of these, I would click batch and that would export all of these. I'm just doing one. So I'll leave it on freestyle. You can also make collages and things here, which is another thing it's useful for. Um, so I'm going to stomp just this one. And I'm at 173 kilobytes. So it's even a little bit, um, about the same size as the Photoshop, a little bit smaller than Lightroom. And if I open that, I don't see the banding. And I think it looks about the same as the Photoshop and you can pull them up side by side and kind of, you know, compare, flip back and forth. It definitely looks a little bit sharper than that one. Let me about the same as the Photoshop. I think that's pretty comparable to me. So like I said, that's the Photoshop that was down at a six on the quality slider. And this was at 75%. So it's definitely not a matter of you can just um, assume it's going to be the same as you use in other software. So I've done use this enough that I've gone through the process and figured out what works for me. Um, but really any of these three processes are going to get you a result that is a 2000 pixel on the long side image that's less than 200 kilobytes or less than 250 anyway, that's really ready to put on your website. So the next step, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually go to my website and I'm going to upload one of these files. I'll use the last one we did. So I'm going to actually upload it to my site. And then the last thing I want to show you is a plugin called short pixel. And a lot of times when you're uploading it, we've optimized it pretty well, but the short pixel plugin can kind of take it sort of the rest of the way and compress it as much as it can while still obviously not compromising the quality. So once you've got it installed, if you go over to um, settings and go to short pixel, uh, you've got a couple of things again that you can play with here. Glossy is usually what I use. Um, that seems to be a good compromise for me again with, with quality and size. And the other thing you can do is you can put your image back up on at least when you start out. And it's basically going to do the compression, but it's going to keep the original image also. So if you go look at the image and you're not happy with it, you can revert back. Uh, 
Um, and then you can do other things. You could do your resizing and things like that in here too. Um, I prefer to do as much of it I, as I can myself rather than having the software handle too much of it for me. But you do have a lot of settings in here. So again, something else to play around with to figure out your process. And then if I go back to my media library, you'll see the one I just uploaded. Um, it reduced it another 42%. So if we you know, go look at the picture. That still looks perfectly fine for me for putting in a blog post. I don't see maybe a tiny bit of banding, but again, I think in the size that it would be inserted in, it's nothing I'm unhappy with. If I was unhappy, I could go back and revert it and just not do the extra compression on this image if I didn't want to. Um, just I'll show you where that is. So if you go back in here and you have your settings, um, you can either try re-optimizing it with the other ones or you can compare it to see if you can actually tell the difference. And then if you're not happy with it, you just restore the backup. So it's um, it gives you a lot of options and it just can sometimes help you give that little extra boost that you need can help your page load faster, especially for bigger blog pages and things like that. So hopefully that sort of demystifies the process of trying to optimize your images. There is a little bit of trial and error that's sort of just part of the process, but for the most part, it'll be a one-time thing up front to figure out your process, and then once you have it, you can more or less batch your images in the future. Um, I do also want to mention, you'll notice you know, the way I named my file, and when you upload it, you'll also have a place to put in alt text. Um, if you are one of my clients, you'll have a link to my resource guide, and we talk about that also. If you're not, I highly recommend going to Fuel Your Photos. They have an SEO um, guide on their website. They also have class that goes into way more detail on those things. And they're also things that should be part of your upload process when you're talking about uploading pictures for your website. So also just other things to consider um, as part of that process. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have questions or you've something that you need help with through the process, leave them in the comments. Also, if you've tried different software and you figured out which one works for you better than another one, um, leave that in the comments too. I'm always curious to hear what works for other people. Um, otherwise, please subscribe and you'll see future videos about WordPress for photographers and other creative entrepreneurs. If you have other things you'd like me to cover about your WordPress website, leave that in the comments too. Thanks for watching.